In this series of tutorials, we're going to investigate pattern-based um, curtain panel families. We'll also investigate a similar and helpful Revit component, um, a uh, adaptive point type component, and they can work very well together, these two types of families and components. Uh, to illustrate this concept, I'll, I've just started out with a floor plan. Um, simple floor plan of these dimensions that are on the screen. Um, just something that we could say put a curtain wall in one of those walls. Um, I've also got uh, two levels that is, I'm going to work with, uh, a level called lower level and a level called ceiling level, which is somewhat above there. If I just switch to an elevation view, you can see that we've got these levels on the screen now, a low, lower level and a ceiling level. and I have got something like a little bit over three meters established as my my height from the lower level to the ceiling level. Okay, so to get ready to illustrate this, we'll just switch to a 3D mode so we can visualize this a bit better. I might use this wall around this side, the wall on this side through here, and I, I might raise its base up um, to a point, let's say, oh, I'm just doing this over in the project in the uh, properties over here now. If I set the base offset up to something like um, 2400, we could uh, apply that. Um, I'm, I'm uh, suggesting that we put a curtain wall in here. Now, pattern based curtain walls are very good for um, when you want to create a, a custom type of uh, curtain wall, something that um, is not easily done with just the standard rivet walls. So to do that, I would normally switch to massing and sight. Um, click on the show mass setting so that you will be able to see your mass as you create it, although Revit will turn that on automatically for you. Um, and, as, and when you're in the massing and sight with show mass turned on, Click on an in-place mass and we'll create an in-place mass here. Um, I'll call this mass um, curtain wall. Okay, yeah, it might be the only curtain wall in this particular project. Uh, I think I need, I need to set the work plane up. So I'm up here on set work plane. And we're going to set the work plane up to this front surface just here. If I, just this front surface. Um, here where my mouse is at the moment, so I'll click on one of those edge lines there to set that up as my working surface. You can then either show or not show that it highlights in blue the work surface that you're going to be working on then. Um, but now that I can see where it is, I don't need to have that shown. Um, I think what I'll do then is I'll create a line on that work surface. I'll create one of them down at this end point here and draw that across. Now just be careful you don't change the work surface as you the reference plane as you're doing this. Um, because if as you hover over different surfaces a different work plane establishes. I'm just going to create another line uh, at this point here. I am changing the work surface to that other end wall but it doesn't matter it's the same work surface anyway. So I should now have a line there and a line there, and I'm in the mass editor here at the moment. So if I select that line and that line, I could have done the two edge lines as well. Um, I should be able to just click create form, and it's giving me the options to create a couple of different sorts of forms here. Um, I'm just, I just want to pick this form here, which is just a flat plate. So that's what it's done for me here. Um, the view style that I'm in here at the moment is realistic, um, just so I can get a bit of a, a visual and shaded and try a couple of different view styles. If I change to hidden line, that might be a little bit more difficult to see, or plain shaded might be just as good, but I think I'll go back to realistic for the moment. So while I'm in this mass editor now, what I'm gonna do is select the surface, not the edge, I have to get the whole form element surface. If you can't do that, you can always tab through to find different things that you can select. So make sure you are selecting the form element surface, and then you can divide that surface up. So 
so I'll just click divide surface and here's where you can change in different directions the number of divisions to work with I'm, I'm just thinking of doing something like 5 and 5 for this particular shape so I've, I've gridded this surface up to 5 and 5 and as you can see this could be the basis for a curtain wall now I want to do something a little bit more than just divide it though I want to start actually describing some geometry so the best way for me to start describing that geometry now would be to go up to the rivet button and open up a new family type and it will be a pattern based family type so if I click in on the rivet button and go to new family and scroll in for the family type so I want a metric curtain panel pattern based metric curtain panel pattern based and I'll open that guy up and this is giving me some geometry to start working with my, my curtain panels um, at the moment if you, you can select the outside of this blue grid I don't think it works by selecting the inside lines no, if you select the outside lines of the blue grid you can set up your horizontal and vertical spacings not that that really matters, you don't have to do this but it'll just help you get it into scale of the, the job that we're working with so I'm going to say, I, I'm, I imagine my panels in the project that we just came from are going to be somewhere about 600 by 600 or they might be 900 by 900 but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really matter okay, so I might just change the scale of this at the moment I can see my lines are very thick and everything and dimensions and text are going to look very thick so I might just change my scale to 1 is to 5 alright okay, so We'll do something. We'll do something simple first um, to start establishing some geometry on here. And probably the simplest thing I could do would be to add a sheet of glass to here. So if I select these one of these uh, reference lines around the outside, by default, anything that's joined to it to form a closed shape will select by default. So it's actually picking up all of the reference lines around that center shape so if I click on that and create a form out of those shapes up here create form there's a couple of different types of shapes it could give me something with some thickness or just a flat plane this time I think I want something with a bit of thickness so I'm going to click on this option here and the thickness that I've got in mind that I'm thinking of would be say 10 millimeter thick glass I'm just typing in 10 and pressing enter so there's that form there at the moment and while I've got that there on its own, I'm not trying to select that form now. Now be careful, you will have to tab through here. I'm selecting those walk, those lines again here now. So I'm hovering on one edge, I'm pressing my tab key, and I'm tabbing through until I see form element, the whole form element, not just the form element surface. So I can select that whole form element, and then I can go over to its material over here in the properties browser. Click in by category and click the button with the little three dots and select glass would be a good material for this. So I've just created a glass panel. Now notice that this family at the top here in the title bar is called family one. If I click load that back, back into my project, it's going to go into my project as a thing called family one. So I'm going to do that at the moment load into my project and it's gone into my project here um, and it's called family one so if i was to scroll down to my families through here and if i go down to curtain panels i'll see that i've got a new curtain panel here called family one um, i might just rename that at the moment now that it's uh, already in this project i might rename that Click, in, uh, click on family one and rename that and I'm going to call it a trust based uh, trust braced panel so this is going to be my trust braced curtain wall panel now if I open up the little plus sign underneath there I've got a type a family type already established in underneath there might rename that one also 
and I'll set it up to something that I know is coming in the future. And I'm going to have a, uh, a frame made out of circular components. So I'm, and I'm going to set this frame up to say have a diameter of something like a frame space. Let's say a 50 millimeter. Oh, let's go a bit more. Like a 65 millimeter diameter frame um, space. And then the bracing pieces, which you'll see later, are going to sit in behind my frame. I'm going to make them have a diameter of 25. Okay, so I've got this family that exists in my project at the moment. It's going to be a truss braced curtain wall panel. It's going to have frame members of diameter 65 and brace members of diameter 25. None of that information exists at the moment. I've just set up the naming convention for it. But let's have a look at what does exist. If I switch to a 3D view, here's the curtain wall, here's the divided surface that we created before, and you can see it's set up with no pattern. If I click on that, I can see the pro under the properties there's no pattern set up there at the moment, but if I drop that down and go down to rectangle, uh, I'm looking for rectangle, Underneath rectangle, you can see our new family that we've lo loaded now called Trust Brace Frame 65 Brace 65. Okay, so if I change to that, take a little while to happen, and that's actually now got the geometry that we've set up in our curtain wall panel. There's the panes of glass that we developed a little bit before. Okay. So what we might do is, uh, I'm going to just stop the video now and we'll start up the next video and we're going to put some more geometry on that curtain wall panel.